Hello, good morning. Friday morning. A lot of stuff going on here. A lot of stuff going on. Busy, busy, busy. I got uh, talking to people on the phone while I'm while I'm waiting for the countdown to come to a close, and Bonnie showing me things as the hymn is coming to a close, and plans for the day, and ah, chiropractor coming up yet yet this morning, and. <clears throat> Uh, last last day of a moving project, or second to last day, major day for a moving project. Uh, it's just kind of, but good morning. Glad you're here. We're going to spend a little time in God's word, uh, reveling in that peace, which surpasses all understanding and comes from his most holy word. So good morning. Glad you could join us. Glad we could spend some time together this way. So let's, uh, oh, what are we doing here? Uh, let's let's uh, let's see who's who's here with us. Get my mouse back where it belongs here. There's Glenn and Grant and Deb and Ann. Good morning to you guys. First ones in on the page this morning. Jill and John. Good morning to you guys up there in Rhinelander. Jerry. Good morning. Forty three. Almost Florida weather. <laughs> Comparatively, we're 43 here too, according to my according to my weather service on the computer. Phone says 44. I think we're supposed to get in the 50s today. Woo! But it's overcast. I don't think it's going to rain till tonight. It does show rain for Saturday, for Saturday, but um, it is kind of overcast. Bonnie says, "Don't get so excited," because she knows the warmer weather's coming, and you know it gets past 70, and she gets ornery. So. Um, yeah, eventually it will. Summer's coming. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. Time to mow. I hope not. I hope not. You know, the the, uh, the bee people, I don't know what you call them, but they say now you're not supposed to start mowing your lawn until lawn till June so the bees have a chance to uh, get out of the ground. Yeah, no mow may. The problem is if you get to let your grass get too long and then you mow it, then it's gonna, then it's gonna die off. You're gonna have brown grass all summer or all uh, yeah all summer long. Brenda, good morning to you. Cloudy and 46, high of 52 in Kalamazoo. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of where we're hanging at too. Renee, good morning to you. A healthy, healthy, happy day. Yeah, that's a good thing. Michael, light green tree frog hitched a ride with us all the way from Florida. Huh. Huh, huh. You're introducing indigenous or uh, non-indigenous species to to um, Michigan. Now when Michigan is overrun by Florida tree frogs, we'll know who to blame. Although how you know he didn't ride down there with you? Kathy, good morning to you. Geraldine and Neil, hello. There's Verna, good morning. Mushtak, good evening, brother. And Connie and Robin, a cantaloupe just rolled off the table and hit the bucket. Rolled under the cure. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now you get, get down on the floor and get it. And that's not the hard part. It's the getting back up again that's tricky. Well, good morning. Cantaloupe sounds good. I may have to buy a cantaloupe today. I bought one here a couple weeks ago, and it I should have left it sit on the counter a little longer. It was... It was okay. It was a I, well, it wasn't Mexican. It was a further. So it was a South American cantaloupe. Yeah, you know, what a world we live in, right? I mean, you didn't you didn't used to expect fresh fruit at the market. The market. Where are you from? At the grocery store, you didn't expect fresh fruit at the grocery store in the middle of winter or or in early early late winter whatever. Um, until at least within your region it was growing. But now we go to the we go to the store, we go to the market, and we expect to find everything there all the time. You know? I love kohlrabi. You know, and uh I want kohlrabi. I used to, when we had a garden I grew kohlrabi. I grew some in Fort Wayne it was full of worms. Blah. It was just that's terrible when you go out and you get your get your kohlrabi out of the garden, you're thinking, I'm going to have some kohlrabi, you cut it off, and there's all kinds of white traces in it. And, ah! I don't suppose, I suppose it'd just be extra protein, but, ah. But you, you go to the market, we expect to find everything there, and then we wonder why 
uh, the cost of food goes up and things like that. Um, I think, yeah. Well, anyway. So, uh, good morning to everybody who's piped in and said hello, and good morning to everybody who will join us later. I'm glad you're here with us to take a little time in God's Word, which is important. It's important. But I'm already on the readings. I don't want to be on the readings. I want to be on page 295 in your Lutheran service book, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order. That's where we begin each day. I'm I'm not dressed in my clericals today because, like I said, I have a chiropractor appointment coming up at 11, and then I've got to run down to Wausau and help with a moving project down there. So it's it's a it's a it's a working day, but not a pro not a pastor visit day. So this whole month has been screwed up that way. Let's uh, let's go ahead here and begin uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Why do we do that every morning? Why do I begin there? Why, why do we have... Why do we have liturgy? Well, we could go right into reading the Bible. I mean, there'd be nothing wrong with that. But this practice of liturgy um, prepares us to hear the word. It, it sets us in the right state of mind, right? When we begin with that invocation of God's name, um, in remembrance of our baptism, where he placed his name on us and made us his children. And then the other three pieces, I think I've said this to you before, but the other three things we say are psalms, right? And then a declaration of God's glory, right? So it, it, it puts us in the right place to begin. Uh, there's, there's to, to some aspect, there's tradition um, involved in it. Um, but also, you got to start somewhere. And why not start with the things that God has given us? My baptism. So, oh, wrong page. Psalm. Our psalm today. Psalm 92. It's the, it, it, by the way, it's the, the uh, Friday, April 29th of the second week of Easter. Um, our psalm, Psalm 92. Psalm 92, verses 1 through 9. My eyes are not focusing where they need to be. <clears throat> it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. With the work of your hands, I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord, your thoughts are very deep. The stupid man cannot know. The fool cannot understand this, that though the wicked sprout like grass and evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. Glory be to the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah, nothing stands out there at me at the moment. I mean, it's all good, but... Um, well, yeah. Wait a minute. Now, the first verse, first and second verse, is, is what we do in our liturgy, right? It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning, the beginning of the day, and your faithfulness by night. Um, of course, for the for the Hebrew, King David, writing this, um, their day begins in the evening. But still, you, you, you know, I, I don't know, since I've never lived in that situation where the day begins as the sun sets, I don't know what it would be like. 
Um, but still, whenever you rise in the morning, it's a new day, right? And I, I, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. But it's good to give thanks to the Lord when you're rising from that, right? At the very least, Lord, thank you that you've seen me through the night and I'm I'm here again this day. <clears throat> thank you that, <clears throat> that you have preserved me uh, for another day in service to you. All right, let's look at our reading. Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 to 18. We took a big jump. We were reading from chapter 25 yesterday. <clears throat> we were reading on the Ark and uh, the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant or the Ark of the Testimony. <clears throat> and then there's a whole bunch of stuff on building the tabernacle. And then, so we kind of right over the top of that. And we went to the next major event, which is Exodus 31. And so we begin here. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bez, Bez, oh, Bez El El, Bez Al, no, Bez Al El. There we go. Bez Al Al El, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him Oholiab, yeah, Oholiab, the son of Ahisamach, wow, these are good names, Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, and I have given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is on it and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils and the pure lamp stands with all its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils and the basin with its stand and the finely worked garments, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of his sons for their service as priests, and the, the anointing oil, and the fragrance incense for the holy place. According to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. And the Lord said to Moses, you are to speak to the people of Israel and say, above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths. For this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath, because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave to Moses when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm. The Lord has given his commands uh, to endure, and it is good. It's kind of like the end of creation, right? On the sixth day, he looked at it and said, it is good, very good. And then he rested. I think that's what God would like to do here. I've given Moses everything that he needs to know for the guidance of these people and sustaining them in my promises, in my covenant. It is good, right? They're going to mess it up. They're going to mess it up. Well, Moses has been on the mountain. They're screwing around. But that's tomorrow. Now consider this, the first part of this reading, 
when we're talking about Aholiab and Bez L. -L. <laughs> I wonder where uh, the, the uh, originator of Superman got his ideas for names when, when they're all ending in L, which is uh, the name of God. Or of God. I was discussing with I think it was with Bonnie the other day, Nathaniel. We tend to spell it N A T H uh, A N I E L, uh, but the, the Hebrew is Nathanael, um, and the L part on the end is of God. Nathan means prophet, and the I L means of God, prophet of God. The L E L. When you see E L on the end of something, it means um, it means it means that of God. So the first thing God does is he says to Moses, he says, after he's, we missed the part where he told them all about building the tabernacle. Um, I think we did anyway. Um, he says, look, I've given to these men the ability to craft these things, right? We forget that the abilities we have are are the things we can do with our hands and our minds and our sight and is a gift from God, right? We all are given certain abilities. Um, some people are more creative. Some people are more logical. Some people are good with their hands and some are better with their minds. Some are better at speaking. Some are better at singing. Some are better at creating music. Some are better at performing music. Some are better at cooking. Some are better at uh, caring and compassion. But these are all gifts from God. And I don't care what your vocation is. Um, and, and sometimes we, we use the word vocation in, in Western language to refer to employment. But it's not just about employment, right? We each have, I'm, I'm going a little bit astray here of the text, but we each have vocations. We have we multiple multiple vocations. It's not just the thing you do to earn a living that's your vocation. Your vocation is what God has given you, and he gives you multitudes of vocations in your life, right? Um, the, the, your first vocation, whether you realize it or not, from the day you are born or even before that, from the moment you're conceived, you have the vocation of son or daughter. And I mean that, son or daughter. Not the vocation of one who has female parts but thinks she's a guy. So let's not even go there. You have the vocation of son or daughter. Um, as you grow older, um, you have the vocation of student, um, perhaps friend. Um, you you, you com com confident. Um, you grow more and, and, and you... Um, well, as you, uh, you always have, in addition to being son or daughter, you also have the vocation after baptism of being a child of God, um, a student of the scriptures. That's a lifelong vocation. Even once somebody's a pastor, we're st I'm still learning. There's still stuff I don't know. We have that stump the pastor Bible study sometimes, and I'm usually stumped. Um, as you grow older, you you find a helpmate, and you be you gain the vocation of husband or wife, uh, and then you bear fruit in that marriage, and you get the vocation of mother or father, um, which brings with it all kinds of other things. Um, and then one day, God willing, the vocation of grandfather and grandmother, or you know, but it just it continues. And I, I you know, I am, I am, uh, first a child of God, son of my heavenly father and son of my earthly father and mother. Uh, may God rest her soul. And uh, then I became husband to my wife, father to my children. Uh, pastor to my congregations, right? But all those vocations are there. And they all come from God. And so these craftsmen have been been given the ability from God 
to craft the things that God had intended for them to do. There's no greater joy than, than finding what it is that God intends for you to do and doing it, and doing it well, um, doing it in ways that are pleasing to him. Do we always find it? No. And do we always do it perfectly? No. But he, yeah, he'll get you there sooner or later. Goodness knows I took some time getting to the vocation of pastor, and it's obviously what he wanted me to, to be doing. So they are to craft these things. Um, everything from the, from the, the, um, the, the, the metals to the wood, uh, to the cloth, um, all of it. He's given them the ability to do these things. So what God's basically saying is don't worry about how you're going to get it done. I've given you, I've given you the people to do it. I've given you the resources, uh, in these men, in these men to do this. So task them with the, with the work. And then he goes to the Sabbath. Sabbaton, the seventh day. The Hebrews counted their days and their week, uh, first day, right? Because they, they begin with how creation was, right? On the first day, so they numbered their week. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, rest, Sabbath. <clears throat> Christ is raised on the first day of the new week, which some would say is the eighth day of the new creation creating a new rest. But let's stick with the Old Testament for a minute. The Lord created in six days and on the seventh day he rested. So it's a, a and listen to this, listen to this closely. Um, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Now, wait a minute, that's not what I wanted. Um, holy to the Lord. Uh, there was something here. Uh, ah. It was verse 14 here, in, in verse 14 in chapter 31. Um, uh, you, uh, now I lost here. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. For you, right? God gave us, gave the Hebrews, gave Israel a day of rest for them. It's not for the Lord. It's holy to the Lord, but he knows that man needs a day of rest. It's for you, right? God could have easily said, well, keep going, right? And instead of 24-hour days, we're going to have 36-hour days, and there's going to be 10 of them in a row, and you're going to work straight through, and on Monday or the first day of the next week, you're going to start another 36-hour day, and don't stop. You get 15 minutes to rest four times a day or something like that, right? He could have done that. It's kind of where our industrialized world works now, right? I mean, how many times do you hear 24-7, 365? That's not the way that we were made to operate. We need rest. We need peace. Well, I take a vacation once in a while. Yeah, no, that's not what you need a recharge day. It's holy for you. It's given for you. Now we don't, after the, 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 the fulfillment of all things in the ceremonial law, which the Sabbath is part of, we are not, mandated by God um, to keep the Sabbath, and certainly not on what we would call Saturday, right? The Sabbath for the for the Israelites, if we, if we compared that six-day week with the seventh day, the seventh day is Saturday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But they start their, they start their days in the evening, right? It was evening, it was morning the first day. It was evening, it was morning the second day. It was evening, it was morning the third day. Um, so the creation actually begins on what we would call Sunday evening. It was evening, it was morning, Monday, first day. Or Sunday, sorry, Saturday evening. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, the point is, with Christ's resurrection at the dawn, we begin counting the days from the morning, from the sunrise instead of from the sunset. Saturday, from Friday evening to Saturday evening, would have been the Sabbath for the Israelites. S Saturday evening to Sunday morning, or to Sunday evening, what we call Sunday evening, was the first day when Christ rose from the dead. But our rest is no longer in the Sabbath day, right? Christ completed all his work, Holy Week. He completed all the work that he had to do on Friday at the cross, and then he rested. 
He took his rest in the tomb. And we now find our rest in him, in his death and resurrection. He, Christ is now our Sabbath rest. Does that mean that we can work 24-7, 365? No. Uh, we still need a day in which we set aside time to spend with the Lord. In fact, every day we need time to set aside for the Lord. That's not new. That's not a new thing. I mean, in, in, in the Old Testament scriptures, we get to Deuteronomy here. God will say you should have your word before your, before your my word before your eyes all the time, like frontlets. Uh, it should be written on your on your doorposts and on your walls, and it should be before you it, when you rise in the morning and when you go to bed at night. It should be on your lips at all times. But we still need rest. Our bodies didn't change with the resurrection or with our baptism. Our bodies are still the same thing. They're still mortal flesh and blood that is dying of sin, and it need they need rest. But our rest is now found not in us keeping a Sabbath day, but keeping a day that's holy to the Lord. And, and as, as followers of Christ, we've always picked Sunday as kind of the day because that's the day in which Christ rose. Um, and we go to church with each, with each other and we, we receive the gifts of God in word and sacrament and that gives us rest. And, and maybe you even take the rest of Sunday and don't do anything major and rest. And that's a wonderful thing if you can do that. It doesn't have to be Sunday. In this day and age, as shameful as it is, people work on Sundays. Um, we, we don't have the old blue laws where everything is closed on Sunday. Car lots are still closed. Banks are still closed. Postal offices are closed. Uh, most of the government facilities are still closed. But you know, there was a time when the grocery stores, the gas stations, whatever, everything was closed on Sunday. And you just didn't do anything on Sunday. Um, but the almighty, the almighty dollar became a focus, and, and suddenly everything's open on Sundays. Everything's open all the time, right? Walmart, 24-7, 365. The only, the only times Walmart's not open is, what, Christmas Day, although I think they're open towards the end of Christmas Day. And I don't know if they're closing on Easter anymore or not. They used to close for Easter Sunday. Um, I don't know if they are yet or anymore or not, but... Um, although it was funny, this you know, with the with the with the um, pandemic in 2020, a lot of places uh, didn't didn't open at 4 a.m. on good on on um, uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving um, or on Thanksgiving evening, um, Thursday evening, uh, to get the get the most out of the dollars. We have a rest in the Lord that is Christ Jesus. He has, he has given us rest through his death, death and resurrection by his blood shed upon the cross for you, by the word that preaches to us and teaches us the, the life that we have in him, the, the, the most important vocation, child of God, forgiven saint in Christ. And we need, whether, whether it's Sunday or Tuesday, you know, back in, in Michigan, the congregation I served had a, a Wednesday night service that was wonderful. Um, so that people who worked on Sunday could be be in church on Wednesday. Um, we need to have that time alone with the Lord. This this isn't it, guys. This is good. This is good, right, and salutary to be in God's Word a little bit each day. Um, but we need that that time in in the gathering together. Hebrews ten twenty five. Let us not forget to get, gather together as is the habit of some, um, but gather so that we might. Oh. Um, something each other encourage each other as the day is drawing near right? and what's the day? the day is the return of Christ so the Sabbath is not it's holy to the Lord but my, my big point here is he gave it for you right? it's not I'm going to church for God I'm going to church so I can be right with God God wants me to go to church, so I'm going to church for him. No, you're going to church because God gave it for you. He gave his son for you. He gave his word for you. He gave his gifts for you. That's what gets lost so often, is everything that God has done throughout all creation. From the beginning, in creation itself, through the death and resurrection of Christ, and up until the last day, 
It's for you. It's not for him. He doesn't need any of it. It's for you to receive and then to give thanks and glorify him. Thanks be to God that Christ is risen for you. Amen. Well, that was all over the map. Let's go to the prayer of the day and see if we can rescue some of this. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, our Sabbath rest. Oh, look at that. Tied it right in. Lord Jesus, our Sabbath rest. You called the 12 apostles to go into all the world <clears throat> to carry on your proclamation of the kingdom of God and your miracles of release. May your church, with its apostolic foundation, continue to announce the good news that in you there is healing and forgiveness. For you live and reign with the Holy Spirit, with God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. That's all, folks. Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Friday morning, the last Friday of the month of April, Sunday's May 1st, May Day. Everybody get out your Maypole. We can do the, the, the dance around the Maypole that they did for the um, Black Plague. For the Black Plague. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, the light of day summons me to the duties and privileges of the stewardship of life. Help me to be a good steward by revealing to me your will for my life. May I make the best possible use of the talents you have given me, so that I may always be ready to give an account of my stewardship. And the activities of this day give me the wisdom to recognize whatever is evil before I am ensnared by it. Grant me the strength to resist every temptation to sin and shame. Let me never be afraid to say, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Grant me the opportunity today to do good to someone who is in need of love. When others deny you, give me the courage to confess my faith. Show me how, I, how to live in a manner worthy of your holy name. This in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And for others on this day, we pray for overcoming worries, something that many hearts are troubled by. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you made all things in your power. All, you made all things by the power of your word. I, your unworthy creature, give you praise and honor. Though the immensity of your creation always overwhelms me, you have assured me of your fine, infinite and continuing love. In your mysterious mercy, you have given your only Son into death for my sins, so that I, believing in him, have become your adopted child and an heir to, of eternal life. As I struggle with my petty problems and am troubled by the worries that afflict me in this world of sin, grant me the assurance that you are my loving Father and I am your cherished child by faith in Christ. Free me from the anxieties of life. Lift me up from the depths of despair. Give me grace to accept the forgiveness you have provided for repentant believers. Cause me in the middle of every difficulty and trial, every sorrow and woe, to trust your providence 
and to look to you alone for help and make all things work together for my everlasting salvation. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with all who suffer in body, mind, or soul. Be especially with those who have asked for our prayers. Larry, Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, Ashley, Susie, Bob, and all who call on your most holy name. Grant them strength and faith in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings to a close our daily devotion on this Friday morning. God's peace be with you. We'll see you tomorrow uh, right here again live for our daily devotion. God's peace be with you.